Shabbat Shalom, my Hebrew brothers and sisters, welcome to the broadcast. Shabbat Shalom, my Hebrew brothers and sisters, welcome to the broadcast. I pray your Sabbath is being blessed by the Most High, your spirit, your resting, and you're ready to feast off the word of the Lord. If you look in the title, today we're going to be talking about keeping of the law the keeping of the law very broad extensive subject when you talk about the law because the law is all through the Bible in pretty much every book because the law of the Lord the law of Yahweh is very powerful and we want to get some understanding about the law, the keeping of the law. The law, the subject of the law can be a very, um, I won't say controversial uh, subject, but when you're dealing with the church and you're dealing with the uh, New Testament of grace and the Old Testament of the law, it becomes a subject of... Um, People want to debate about it because the church, of course, uh, have taught that the law was done away with. So we have subjects like that where people are teaching that the law is done away with. It demands us to teach about the law, discuss the law of God, the law of Yah. So welcome to the broadcast if you're just tuning in we're talking about the law of Yahweh, the law and um, a lot of people may have a lot of questions excuse me about the law of the Lord so I want to begin in Exodus because this is when Moses went to Mount Sinai to receive the law it was a purpose. It was a reason that the Most High wanted Moses to come up to the mountain to receive the laws. And we're dealing with the children of Israel. The laws, if you can remember this, always remember this. The laws and commandments, the statutes of the Lord, was only given to the children of Israel. And um, because they were the Most High's chosen people. So we're talking about the keeping of the law. Very important for us to understand. So, I, it's, again, it's such a broad subject. If you're just now tuning in, we wanna, we're going to be covering as many scriptures as we can in dealing with the law of the Lord. So I'm going to start here in Exodus chapter 20. After Moses has given them the law, and the law is the commandments. The law also is the commandments of the Lord. So you see the commandments here that Moses has given the children of Israel in Exodus, of course, uh, chapter 20. And uh, you can begin at verse 3. You will see those laws. But there are 613 commandments and laws of the Lord that he's given us. But right here is only stipulating these uh Ten commandments here. So we skip over to Exodus chapter 20 verse 20. This is the purpose of the law that we can see why the Most High gave Moses the law, the commandments to give to the children of Israel. If you're just not tuning in, we're in Exodus chapter 20. We're going to go right here to verse 20. Thank you for tuning in. And all praises to the Most High for giving us life and giving us life more abundantly today to be able to come on the broadcast, to be able just to live and have fellowship one towards another. Shabbat Shalom, my, sister, my Hebrew brothers and sisters, on this Sabbath day. So Exodus chapter 20, verse 20, it says, And Moses said unto the people, to the children of Israel, Fear not, for God is come to prove you that his fear may be before you and that his fear may be before your faces that you sin not. So that is the purpose of the law. Let's read it again. Exodus chapter 20, verse 20. It says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you 
and that his fear may be before your faces. Let's stop right there. So the law was given in order that the fear of the Most High may be before their faces. That is the purpose of the law, the fear of the law, because the fear of the Lord, of course, is the beginning of wisdom. Now, in dealing with the children of Israel during this time, uh, they didn't have the proper healthy fear of the Lord other than if they hear a loud noise or a thunder or his voice. But the Lord wanted them to know that they were his chosen people for one. He called them out. He separated them for himself and made them holy. That's what holy means, separated from other nations that were around them. He made a distinction that Israel was holy unto him. So he gave them the laws again. He gave them his laws again as we read here so that his fear may be before their faces. That you sin not. So that is the purpose of the law. The law is given so that people can fear the Lord, the Israelites, so that we can fear the Lord, that his fear be before our faces. Because when you read the laws, when you read the commandments, you see the things that the Most High says is against his law. You see the things that the Most High says that he doesn't want you and I to do. And we see what transgress those laws of the Lord. Because again, we're going to get into the scripture where the law was a schoolmaster. And you can see that because it's going to tell the children of Israel you know, what is wrong? What offends the Most High? What transgress against the law of the Most High? So it's a schoolmaster. It's like a child. You don't tell the child that something is wrong, that this is danger if you go too far here or if you do this. They don't have any understanding. So the children of Israel, before the law were given, they didn't have an understanding of what was wrong and what was right as far as offending one another. And then the Most High gave them, this, of course, the ceremonial laws as well, as well as the moral laws. So we're talking about the keeping of the law because a lot of people have, uh, they're very confused about the law because the church has taught for so long that the laws have been done away with. Done away with. Well, we're going to... Uh, uh, show here in scriptures that the law have a purpose. It has a purpose. So Psalms 119 165. Let's go there. Psalms 119 165. Thank you again for tuning in. All praises to the Most High for giving us this day to come together to break the bread of life to get into the word of the Lord. So Psalms 119, 165, we got to go all the way over here. And it says here, great peace, great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. Great peace. That means the most high. If we love the law of the laws of the Lord, we're going to have great peace. And yes, the laws are telling us what we cannot do as we're going to, you know, you, re you read the commandments, you can read the 10 here, but there are many laws in the Bibles and statutes and commandments that the Most High has separated us to be able to obey, to be able to follow after in order for us to live. As the scripture says, keep my commandments and ye shall live. So the law have power. So he say, great peace have they that love his law. That means you love to do the right thing by the law of the Lord. It's already inside of your heart to obey the law of the Lord because you want to live a good, prosperous life. Long life will I satisfy them and show them my salvation, the Most High says. So we establish that we should love the law. And that's how we're going to have peace because why? If you don't, we don't transgress the law, that means we have peace. We don't have nothing to fear that we're going to be judged by the law, that the Most High is going to bring his wrath upon us if we, you know, disobey the law. 
so we can live in the law. And we're going to see how Yahweh Christ gave us the fulfillment of the law to keep in him. And I think that's where the confusion come in at. So let's go also. So many scriptures here. I hope I'll be able to get them on it. So welcome to the broadcast. Galatians. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3. And we want to look in verse. Uh, let's get there first. Galatians chapter 3. And let's go to verse, let's start at verse 23. Galatians chapter 3, 23. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. So now the apostle Paul here is distinguishing law and grace. If you're going to read the scripture where the law was given to Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Yahweh is his real name. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto faith, which should afterwards be revealed. So in the old covenant, we didn't have, they didn't have faith. It was something about the Israelite where they couldn't comprehend faith. The Israelites couldn't comprehend faith to be obedient and walk in the spirit. They didn't have that understanding. Now we know that Abraham, of course, he's the father of faith. But the Israelites still was not able to comprehend how to walk in faith and obey God. So we're going to see that God had to give the, the most high, had to give them the spirit on the inside in order for them to uh, comprehend and obey the laws. Because when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, what were they doing? They were building a golden calf of an idol. So they didn't have the understanding that this is wrong. This is wrong. That's why the Most High had to give them the law. So let's, through Moses, let's go to verse 24. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster. Yes, it was teaching. It's a teaching until, of course, Christ came on the scene to fulfill it all. So we now obey the law in the spirit of our hearts and our minds because we what love the law we just read it here in psalms 119 165 that we should love the law so it's inside of us if you love god keep his commandment great peace have they that love his law so that's a blessing to us let's go a little further wherefore the law was our school message to bring us unto christ to bring us unto Christ, meaning the fulfillment of Christ, that he fulfilled the law. You know, we're going to read that the law could never make anything perfect, but we're going to see that the law is perfect. So the law couldn't make us perfect because the Israelites didn't have an understanding how to keep the law because they needed faith. It says again, Verse 24, if you're just not tuning in, Galatians chapter 3, now we're in verse 24. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. So that justification by faith means something. That means in our own efforts, we don't keep the law. You can't keep the law in and of yourself. We have to go through Yahweh Christ to keep the law. Because we're going to see and understand that in your own efforts of wanting and trying to keep the law under the law, you're going to be judged by the law and you're going to fail by the law. Because now we have justification by faith in Christ. Not just of the keeping of the law. The Most High gave us Shai that we love the law now because it's inside of us. The Holy Spirit makes us want to keep the law. The Holy Spirit gives us a desire to love the law. So let's go a little further here. Okay, so verse 25 says, But after that faith has come, we no longer, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. We don't need the schoolmaster now of the law to condemn us if we break the law. See, the, the, the scriptures tells us that the law 
brings death. So which one do you want? Do you want to keep the law on your own? Do you need that schoolmaster of the law to correct you? Or do you need the spirit in your of faith in your Howishai that gives you the ability through grace, as the scripture says, Moses brought the law, but, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Which one do you want? Do you want to be judged and condemned by keeping the law of the Old Test in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant on your own? Or would you rather have your faith in your Howishai and submit to him and understanding and keeping the law of the Lord in your heart where you love the Lord. You know that the most high is a God of wrath. You understand that he's a holy God and that he wants us to obey him, obey his laws because we love him because this is the right thing to do. Because as I said earlier, he said, great peace have they that love their law. And if you keep the commandments, you will live. It's not that hard for us. So, let's go a little further here. We're going to just go back to another scripture. For ye are all the children of God, Yahweh, by faith in Christ Jesus, in Yahweh, by faith. So, we, that's where the church tells people that the law is done away with because now we have it by faith. But we, it's, I think they need a better teaching or understanding that even though Christ came to fulfill the law, it's fulfilled in him, but we are obeying and keeping the law through Christ. Not in and of ourselves like the Old Testament did. If the children of Israel broke the law, they were cut off. They were uh, put to death. They were put out the camp. So, let's go to John 1.17. Very familiar passage of scripture. If you're just not tuning in, thank you so much. We're talking about the keeping of the law. A lot of people are confused whether we should keep the law, whether the, the church said the law is done away with. Well, we as Hebrew Israelites, we know that we have to keep the law in and through Christ. We don't put ourselves under the law physically or in and of ourselves. We keep the law through the spirit of Christ by faith. And that is the only way we can be justified by faith. Because if you don't, then that means if you're wanting to keep the law yourself, then you're going to be judged by the law. And the judge, the law is nothing but death. The law offers anything but death. So I said earlier, you have a choice. That's why the Bible, there's another scripture we're going to see that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Because you can condemn with the law. Judgment can be set upon somebody with the law. Verse 17, John 1, 17. It says, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Yahweh, his real name. Let's read that again. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. I often say this on the broadcast that Moses gave the law and the law demands you. The law demands you to live right or die. But grace through your Yahweh shows you how. Shows you how to live right, love the law, obey the law through Christ. That's what grace, you know, you can see in Romans chapter 7, you can read it for yourself. You will see the uh, understanding as Paul was using his life to show you how the law shows us our sins. Without the law, we wouldn't know we are sinners. See, the law shows you just how sinful human nature really is. It's there to show us that we are really sinful, messed up people. So he shows us how to be righteous. He shows the law shows us how to be godly. That's what the Most High intended, as we read in Exodus 20 and 20, if you're just not tuning in. The law is there to show us that we need to fear the Most High. The law is there to show us that we don't need to sin against the Most High. And grace and truth now through your house shows us how 
to walk that walk with the Most High, that we can obey and love his laws, statutes, and commandments. So let's go to another scripture here. Let's go to Romans 7 and 7, since we were talking about that. That's going to give us an understanding here now. It's a very long, extensive uh, scriptures in dealing with the law. Very broad subject. Because it deals with the holiness of the Most High. That's what the law does. We may not be able to cover it all on this broadcast. Let's go to, again, Romans. Let's look at verse 7 right here. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Why is he saying this? We are gonna go, we need to go a little further up. Let's go a little further up. Let's go to verse 4. Romans chapter 7 verse 4. Wherefore, my brethren, you are also become dead to the law by the body of Christ. So we are dead to the law by the body of Christ because... The body of Christ and what he gave us through grace should put to death the deeds of the flesh. See, the law is supposed to put the flesh, put to death the deeds of the flesh. That's what the law is intended to do. It says that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. So if we're not keeping the commandments, if we're transgressing the commandments, we can't bring forth fruit unto God. Verse five, for when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law. See, the motions of sin are by the law because we're going to be judged by the law. This is the difference did work in our members to bring fruit unto death. So the law is showing us, you all messed up. Law is showing us you got this wrong, we got that wrong. The law is showing us the fruits that will lead us to death. There are sins that people do that are sins unto death. And don't get scared, don't run off the broadcast. Because, you know, people hear that word, they don't want to hear that. They may got some things in their lives. You know, the Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, of Yahweh, Yahweh, the Most High. All have sinned. So you don't need to run off the broadcast when you hear these things because that's what the Most High sent Christ to do to give us grace and truth that takes us by the hand and show us the way. So it says, again, let's look at verse 6. But now we are delivered from the law. We're delivered from the law through Christ because now he has a better way. He has a better way than cutting us off for our sins. It's right here. That being dead, wherein we were held. We were held in the bondage of the law because we will be killed. As many of the Old Testament people, when they sin and transgress the law, they were killed instantly. That we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Because the scripture says that the letter killeth. What's the letter? The letter is the law. The letter will kill you. That's why people, they, they very, uh, you ever heard of... Uh, Preachings of hell and brimstone. That's the law teaching. And it's right. Because the law is God. Because God is holy. So he had to do something with us down here. He had to do something with the children of Israel. He had to make a way for the children of Israel. He didn't want to keep cutting his people off like he did with Noah and the flood. So he had to make a way for his people. That was transgressing his law. Because it was grieving him. And he said that sin was staked to his nostrils. So that's why he gave Moses the, the commandments, the law on Mount Sinai. To help the people that he created. So he didn't have to keep cutting them off. So let's go here again. Let's read verse 6 again. Just not tuning in. Romans chapter 7. We're in verse 6. But now we are delivered from the law. That being dead wherein we were held. That we should serve in the newest of the spirit. What spirit? The Holy Spirit. Now he gave us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit on the inside of us now that ministers to us. That tells us and reminds us why we shouldn't do certain things. Because if you do, you're going to trespass the Lord. Or I'll show you how. The Most High gives us the understanding of what sin would do to our lives. As Paul going to explain it here. Stay with me. It says, and not in the owners of the letter. The owners of the letter is the old covenant. So you have some people, they want to, as Hebrew Israelites, they don't want to uh, believe in anything of the new covenant of the New Testament. Why? Well, they have 
different theories about the New Testament. Maybe they feel something's been tampered with. But one thing I can tell you, the Bible is a wholesome, holy book. Very wholesome and holy. There are just some things that I don't care. Man can never get into that revelation, knowledge, and deep understanding of Yahweh. And how he wants us to live and how he understands the human mind. The human spirit. So he's given us the newness of the the newness of the spirit. Verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Is the law sin because the law shows our sins? Let's look at this. God forbid, nay, I had not known sin but by the law. So without the law, I would not even know that I had sin. So the law shows us our sin. For I had not known lust, except the law has said, thou should not covet. So, it's like a child. You do something, you pop them, now they're aware, don't do that. So that's what the law does for us. But sin, taken occasion by the commandment, warped in me all manner of conspicuousness. For without the law, sin was dead. Yes, because without the law, the Most High showing us that if, you know, you, you, you got sin in your side of you, we wouldn't even know. For I was alive without the law once. Yes, because he didn't know that he was sinning. And he says, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Yes, because the commandments showed us what we didn't need to do. And the commandment which ordained to life, I found to be deaf unto me. So basically, he wanted, you know, a person can be just like they are, not knowing. And the commandment which ordained to life I found to be deaf, Paul says unto him. For sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me. Right. Because now you're aware. It slew him because, yes, now you're aware that you can sin. Now you're aware that you're transgressing against the law. Let's, let's look at uh, verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. So if the laws have been done away with, as people say, and Christ fulfilled them is a better way to always understand that. Because the law is holy, just, and good. Now I'm not going to go too much further into uh, Romans chapter 7. You're going to really, I'm going to come on and do a teaching about this. Because there are some uh, theologians that was wondering whether this chapter here in Romans chapter 7, whether it was before Paul was converted or understanding, you know, into Christ, because we know he was a Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. So was it before Christ that he came over to Christ because he was he used to persecute the saints? Yes, I want to say their favorite scripture. Yes, because this scripture right here lets you know the power struggle from the flesh of the spirit and the laws of the Lord and what the law did in revealing our sins, you know, and revealing just what's inside of us. So Paul in chapter 7 of Romans, you get some time, stay right here and read this and go over to the first part of chapter 8 as well because it'll show you how Paul is differentiating the uh, purpose of the law in his life and how he struggled in the flesh. And again, there were some discrepancies or whether it was before or whether it was after. I tend to say it doesn't matter because a lot of people didn't want to say, they wanted to feel that Paul didn't have this struggle of the flesh, of lust, or whatever it is he was struggling, struggling with that he's saying here. They wanted to say it was before he converted to uh, uh, believing in Yahweh Shai. And um, not afterwards. I tend to say afterwards. Because even after we come to the most high and understanding and living for him, there are still struggles that many people, ourselves, that we have and we go through. So he's given us the understanding of the law. And I'm going to come on here and read it. I want to continue, but it'll take me off course. So I got to continue to get these scriptures here. Now let's look at Psalms 19 chapter 7. We're talking about keeping the law, the keeping of the law. A lot of people, we need to uh, refresh our spirit to understand that 
We need to always honor and obey the Lord in the law, statutes, and commandments. Because, see, without obeying, that's why a lot of people in our nation are being cut off. Because grace has just, you know, yes, the Bible says what grace, what sin about, grace about. What sin about, grace about much more. More sin, more grace. More grace, more grace, more grace. That's true. But also the Bible says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Because keeping the law, statutes, and commandments is how we keep our blessings and how we live in the earth a long time. So Psalms chapter 19, the keeping of the law, very um, intense subject. And we may go back to Romans if I have time, if I could get through these scriptures. Because it may help someone in the power struggle if they're struggling in their flesh. We all have been there at some point of a, in, in our lives because Satan is the tempter. The, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. Our spirit is always willing because we love the Lord. Our, spilling, our spirit is always willing because we want to have the favor of the Most High. But the flesh is weak, and that is what Paul is talking about in Romans chapter 7. But Romans chapter 9, I'm sorry, Psalms chapter 19, and let's go here um, to verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. So that it let us know that the law of the Lord is perfect. Ain't nothing wrong with the law. It could make anything perfect, but it's perfect. We'll get to that scripture in a minute. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the law is sure, making wise the simple. Let's go to verse 8. The statutes of the law are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the law is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, much fine gold, sweeter also than honey on the honeycomb. So let's stop right there. Let, what, let's go to verse 11. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. By what? The law, statute, judgments, commandments of the Lord. The servants are warned of the Lord. We are warned by these things. Why? Because the Most High loves us. Because he only chastised those that he loved. And how did he do that? With his laws. Because he's a holy, holy God. The Most High is a holy God. That's why he separated. That's why he separated Israel. That's why he would chastise them. He chastised those he loved. He wanted us to be different from other nations. The Most High wanted us to be different. That's why sin is a transgression of his laws because he wanted us to be different from other nations because other nations don't have the, the uh, faith and conscience like the Hebrew Israelites. They don't, they don't fear the Most High. So that's why they, you can understand they was not given the commandments. You see all of the things that these heathen nations has uh, implemented in laws. Laws are making unholy things lawful. The evil in the world, the sin in the world, making it like it's okay to do, such as homosexuality, such as lesbianism. The laws... Make it okay. Now, I will say this. As far as the protection, they have protection out there for people that live these lifestyles. So we don't know how the Most High feels about that. Because if the Most High is not willing to cut off somebody, you know, right then and there, then he will use the laws of the land. However, in the laws of the Most High, it's an abomination. And it's an easy way to get your life cut off. So we go here and say, moreover, by them is thy servant warned. And in keeping of them, there is great reward. There's a great reward for obeying the commandments, the law, statutes of the Lord. It's a great, but we do it in Christ. Because in your own effort, it's going to make yourself righteous. And if you put yourself under the law to be judged, then that's only going to give death. He wants us to place our faith in Yahushua. So the Hebrew Israelites that don't believe in the New Testament is very dangerous. You have no atonement, no perpetuation, forgiveness, repentance for your sins. The Most High just not going to give us 
the old covenant and let it stay right there with the law, that means every one of the Hebrew Israelites that have not placed their faith in Yahushua, you are readily to be condemned, to be judged by the law because you refuse to put your faith in Yahushua. Yahushua is the tony of situation that covers us, covers our sins, just like the cherubims on the Ark of the Covenant. You don't put your faith in Yahweh You don't have no perpetuation for your sins. Now the Most High have mercy. He having mercy on the Hebrew Israelites that have not yet received Christ. The atonement. He needed blood. He sent Yahweh to the cross to shed blood. Because the law in the Old Testament they had to sacrifice animals to Bring that appeasement to the Most High. See, the Most High need blood to appease his anger, to appease his wrath for sins. So where's the blood for your sins? If you don't believe in Christ, the ultimate sacrifice and atonement for your sins, where is the blood? Where is your sins are forgiven? You have to have the atonement, the blood that he sent you, how shot to shed on the cross for us so that we don't have to do the animal sacrificial system and sprinkle the blood on the altar and ourselves. We don't have to do that now because it's by faith that we're justified through Christ. So we go to another scripture here. I think I highlighted what I want. The law is the law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul. Yeah, because once you realize how holy the law is, then you feel like, yeah, I better do these. Yes, it's going to make my life better. I don't need to be trying to find ways to break the laws of the Lord. It's that we supposed to live how he commands us to live. And you utilize whatever grace that he's given us. As he told Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. So no matter how, time, how many times you got to go through, you get it right. He said, my grace is still sufficient for you. You will get it right if you love the Lord. You will get it right. Because he said his grace is sufficient and his strength is made perfect in weakness. So let him walk you along. Let the most, how shall I help you through the grace that he's provided? So let's also go to Hebrews chapter 7 verse 19. Just now tuning in, we're talking about the keeping of the law. Understanding what happened with the law and how the church taught the law. And now we understand that we as Hebrew Israelites, getting back to the law, statutes, and commandments is uh, the best thing uh, that we can ever do. Because um, if you're going along with what the church told you that the laws are done away with and you hear people say you don't have to keep the laws, they're not given a proper teaching and understanding of that. You just don't tell people you don't have to keep the laws of the Lord anymore. Uh, that is something the Most High doesn't want us to uh, teach. You don't teach people that the law is done away with. We, we can't do that because when you do that, now you're telling people that they can pretty much uh, get away with anything. And uh, the Hebrew Israelite are separate people. And once the Most High get fed up in the transgressions of a person, that's where the law kicks in. You, you have a relationship with the Lord. He'll let you know when you're about to transgress that law, his laws. So Hebrews chapter 7. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sticking with me here in this teaching. And Shabbat Shalom to all of you out there. All my Hebrew brothers and sisters. So Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 19. Let's look right here. Well, we got to go a little further up. Let's go to verse 16. Hebrews chapter, chapter 7, verse 16. Who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. Let's go to verse 17. For he testifies, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. This was a high priest, a spiritual, uh, like a theophany, a Christophany, of Christ that had no beginning nor end. This Melchizedek right here. For there is verily a dismantling of the commandment. A dismantling? Let's see what that is. Going before going before the weaknesses and unprofitableness thereof. 
Verse 19, key point here. For the law made nothing perfect. That's why the dismantling of the commandments. The dismantling of the commandments, because the law is the commandments, it made nothing perfect because again, it would demand you. The Old Testament, the commandments demand you to be holy. Demand you not to do the things of the uh, that will break and transgress the commandments of the Lord. Read the commandments. Exodus chapter 20. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covenant. Thou shalt come out, not commit adultery. Thou shalt not uh, uh, have no other God before the Most High. You know, those are the those are just the 10, but 1600, 613 commandments as we have understand in this Bible. So also scripture say you break one, you break them all. So that's why we have to have understandings of the laws and the commandment. But there was a dismantling. Why? For the law made nothing perfect. This is why your house shall had to come. The law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. What's the better hope? Christ, your house shall, the New Testament, the new covenant in grace that shows us how. And that's why he said we're sin abound, grace abound much more, by the which we draw nigh unto God. So we draw nigh unto the Most High through the better covenant. Of Christ bringing the grace that we need to understand and have the the laws written in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is inside of us working that which is right through uh, the power of Christ to obey the law, statutes, and commandments. His laws and commandments is written inside my heart. It should be written in our heart. We have that understanding. Now let's see here. Let's look at that verse one more time. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. This is the better hope that we have in Christ as Hebrew Israelites. Because under the Old Testament, we wouldn't get away with some of the things that we've gotten away with in our lifetime now. So we should be thankful. Now we read, let's go, I think we read, read Galatians chapter 3 verse 24 about the law being a schoolmaster. If you're just not tuning in, yes, the law was a schoolmaster in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, that showed us our sins. And if you read Romans chapter 7 again, the law shows us our sins. Now, let's also go to Jeremiah 31, 31. The keeping of the law. Because if we don't honor and keep the, the laws of the laws in our heart, you go astray. And Hebrew Israelites think the most high that the teachings helps us to understand just how important it is to want to honor and obey the commandments, laws, and statutes of the Lord. So Jeremiah chapter 31, and um, let's look here. I said in verse 31, behold, the days come saith the Lord that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. That's because it's on the inside now. We obey the law, statutes and commandments from the Holy Spirit on the inside that Christ just said here that he will put it on the inside of us. Now let's go to... Because what? He wrote it on the inside. James chapter 3, verse 4. So we just seen how he's going to give us uh, the ability to obey the law, statutes, and commandments. He's going to write it on the inside. And you can keep reading a little further down in that particular chapter. But James chapter 3, and let's look at verse 4. Let me make sure I want to get this right scripture here. I 
But let's go to another scripture. I don't want to deal with that right here, right now. Let's go to John chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. It's probably where I meant to go at the beginning. John chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. We're talking the keeping of the law. It's very important. Moses gave the law to the children of Israel, but Christ brought grace and truth to us. So let's go right here to John. And let's go to let's get the right verse here. Stick with me here. Let's go to verse 3 and 4. All things were made by him, and without him without, was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Let's go to verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehend it not. And this scripture let you know that even in the law of the Lord, Christ, the Most High, sent Yahushua to be the fulfillment and he created all things for his glory. So people say, like Paul said in Romans, wherefore is the law not good? Because Christ said now the law has been done away with, that he's a fulfillment. No, we just said right here, all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. So there is no discrepancy of the law not being good as some people will have us to think because they said the uh, Old Testament is done away with it. Contrary to that, because the Most High says here, all things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. And in him was life and the life was the light of men. So the law is pretty much the light of men to show us our good, our bad, transgression, to warn us, all of that comes into the effect when we're dealing with the law. Now I want to go to another scripture here. Let's go to um, James chapter 2. Probably where I want to go to again. Verse 10. We're talking about the keeping of the law. Very important here so that we can live. If we keep the laws of the law, we will live. That's what scripture says. So James chapter 2, and let's go to verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. So that's why we have to be careful with the law of the Lord. Be careful in living directly under the law, because you got to keep them all. 613 commandments and law statutes. You have to keep them all. So this is why it's important to live in Yahweh, to live in Christ. So you can be justified by faith in Christ and not be condemned with the law. So let me see. I will see if I want to go a little further. Now, this is a whole lot of things in here, but let's go ahead and read verse 11. For he that said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So you may not do one sin, break one law, but you break another one, but you're still guilty of them all. So that's why he has given us the laws in our heart to have the fear and the reverence by the Holy Spirit for the law. So we won't be guilty. And that's why we also have the uh, perpetuation of Christ to cover our sinful deeds. That we, when we break the law, don't want to break the law intentionally as David said. Keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins. Presum like just going in and like, I just, you know, I'm just going to go do this. That's presumptuous sins. That's really, um, how the most high uh, wrath and um, uh, judgment come on a person when they're deliberately sinning because your eyes are open to what is wrong, what is wrong. So it's like red tape. You go beyond that. You know, there's just danger on the other side. 
So someone will say, well, I feel weak in this area. I feel weak in this area. And you feel weak in another area. Well, that's how the Holy Spirit will deal with you. And that's why it's so important to stay in the word and have the law of the Lord flowing through our spirit, through Christ that gives us that grace. As I said earlier, well, Christ said, my grace is sufficient for you. My, my strength is made perfect in weakness. And some of the things that we go through of temptation or tests and trials in our life is to buffet us. It's to buffet us. It's to buffet us to keep us humble. It's to buffet us to let us know we need the most high. It's to buffet us to let us know without him we are nothing. Without him we can't do nothing. As John 15, 5 says. So you going through some struggles or temptation in your life and the most high has given you a gift. It's to you may have a gift of knowledge or understanding, or he's blessed you with, you know, a, a, a powerful wisdom or whatever he's given you in your gift in your life. Your temptations is to buffet you, to keep you humble, to keep us humble before the Lord. It's not always to drive us into sin. No, it's to buffet us like Paul said. He asked the Most High to take it away three times. That's when the Most High said, my grace is sufficient for you. Whatever it was that Paul was dealing with. Because it doesn't really give a description of whatever he was dealing with. But you can tell from Romans 7, chapter 7, it has something to do with the flesh. So let's go a little bit further here. Um, let's go to Jeremiah 44, 23. It's talking about, we're going to see here. Some consequences, consequences for breaking the law. Jeremiah chapter 44. Thank you all for tuning in. And, and you know what, by the way, oh, you know, I like to stay focused on the word. We get negative things and negative things said. In our nation, we Hebrew Israelites, we want to stay focused on what matters. We want to be able to... Um, uh, Focus on substance. Don't give our energy to anything that's not edifying our spirit. Arguing back and forth with people trying to get them straight because the wicked going to be the wicked. So we want to stay focused on the spirit of the word that can help us grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh. So we see here in Jeremiah chapter 20, chapter 44. And we go over here to verse... Let's go to verse 22. Start verse 22. Okay. Uh, we better go up to verse 21 because talking about Judah. And it's talking about the law basically being broken. Verse 22. The incense that you burn in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, ye and your fathers and your kings and your princes and the people of the land, did not, did not the Lord remember them? And came it not into his mind. So that the Lord could no longer bear. Because of the evil of your doings. And because of the abomination which you have committed. Therefore is your land a desolation. And an astonishment and a curse. And without an inhabitant. As at this day. So we see also. Let me throw, uh, iterate this in here. Um, Deuteronomy 28, you know, we see all of the curses that our nation endured because of transgression and disobedience to the law of the Lord. We see what transgression of the law. See, that's why Yahweh said in the New Covenant, there remains no more sacrifice for those that keep sinning, but a fierce uh, indignation, vengeance of the Lord. Be fury. Because Yahweh has came, shed his blood, gave us all the strength we need. How are we going to keep remaining in sin? That's why I say, you know, the person that is of God and love God, we don't keep sinning. You don't keep sinning. There may be some things coming in your life, overthrow you, caught you off guard, but we don't keep sinning. This is just the scriptures. So let's look here at verse 23. If you're just not tuning in, we're in Jeremiah chapter 44, now verse 23. Because you have burned incense and because you have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, nor walk in his law. 
nor his statutes, nor his testimony. Therefore, this evil is happened unto you as at this day. And that's why I want to stop because breaking the law, statutes, and commandments of the Lord take your blessings away. When the children of Israel will sin against the Most High and then they come back and obey the law, statutes, and commandment, they were blessed again. But when they disobeyed and broke the commandments, uh, he said, you are not my people. And he dismissed them until they came back and obeyed the law, statutes, and commandments again in sincerity from the heart. So we just read here in Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 21 through 23, how their evil doings brought the curses and destruction upon them. And that's what the law will do. That's why we have to get down on our knees in the spirit before the presence of the Lord and come through Yahweh Shai. We don't worship Yahweh Shai as, you know, theology, of course, systematic theology in the uh, Christian, you know, uh, Constantine doctrine. You know, it teaches us that Christ and God is the same. Understanding through our teachings in the Bible, Hebrew understanding that the Father sent the Son. So, we have uh, that power that he had gave Yahweh to come to have. He gave him all power in heaven and earth. All power. So we don't have to wonder and think about that. So some people, we they feel that they want to, when they call on Yahweh, they can just call on Yahweh Shai as God as well because Yahweh Shai had the power in earth just as the Father. And that power is there just as the Father because he gave him all power in heaven and in earth. But it's to give us the understanding to point us to serve and worship Yahweh. Worship the Most High. Not Yahweh Shai. We have to understand that. Yahweh Shai was sent to point us to the one true God that we should worship. And to look to him. He's the mediator of a better covenant. That's why we have the New Testament. Christ is the mediator of a better covenant. We, we read that because the law could not make anything perfect. Okay, for the sake of time, let's go ahead on. Um, let's go to Romans, back to Romans, but verse chapter 3. Let's go to Romans. You're just now tuning in. Thank you so much. We're talking about the keeping of the law. Should You know what? You can get to a place in the Most High where, like David says, Thy law have I love. Because the law helps us to live right, be blessed, and great peace have they that love his law. That means you don't have to worry about nothing. That's what keeping of the law is in your spirit. I think somebody said earlier they learned to, um, I did see that good comment. Uh, I don't want to know if I want to use the word relax. Well, that's a good way to, you know, for another person to describe it. That's, that's beautiful because when you start really living for the most high, you have nothing to worry about something of uh, some type of a desolation as we just read in Jeremiah chapter 44 or a uh, catastrophe or something evil coming upon you because the most high say great peace have they that love his law. So you don't break the law, you're going to have that great peace in your life. Because, you know, as the Bible said, there's some sins that lead to death, and that's transgression, that's iniquity. There's a lot of things that can lead to death when people sin. So we said Romans chapter 3. And um, let's start here at... We got to go to verse 30. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith, do we make void the law through faith? So he's saying just because we have faith now, is the, is the law void, null and void just because we have faith? Mm -mm. God forbid. Yay. We establish the law. We establish the law. We still teach the law. Because the law is good and perfect. Because the law is a reflection. 
The most high is his law that is holy. All of the things that the law tells us is holy because it's a blessing because now we're serving the holy God. The pure and holy God we just read, the law is holy, converting the soul. The law is, you know, it does something to our being as a spiritual person, as Hebrew Israelites. The law brings us into that covenant of the Most High where we're really set apart because he's holy, now we holy. He said, be ye holy as I am holy, and be ye perfect as I am perfect. So in this walk with the Lord, we are being sanctified in the process to become more like our Heavenly Father, to be more holy, to be more separate. You see yourself getting away from this, getting away from that, separating from these people, separating yourself from that people. Anything that can uh, defile your spirit, anything that takes you out of the uh, the realm of that holiness, we, we, we want to move ourselves away from it and, and not break the law, statutes, and commandments. So we don't make void the law of the Lord. Rather, we establish it. We establish it because it's a beautiful thing to live holy. Shabbat Shalom, my Hebrew brothers and sisters. Now, Nehemiah chapter 8. Let's go there. I only have a few more scriptures, and I think we may be able to um, get back to Romans. We may or may not, but let's go to Nehemiah chapter 8. We're talking about the keeping of the law. Very broad subject here. And now let's go to verse 1. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the streets That's what, that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra, the strive to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. So they found the laws. Don't you know they weep? They weep and cry when they found the laws, the statues of the Lord. And they realized because of the captivity that they had went in, Babylonian captivity, even in Syrian captivity, when they found the law of the Lord, they realized they was way off. That Israel was doing some of everything. It broke their heart that they didn't keep the laws of the Lord. That's just like when you, you know, I love to bring up the Apocrypha. When you come into understanding of Hebrew Israelite and they introduce you to the Apocrypha, you realize there's just so much more of the law, the holiness of the Lord. And you realize that you want to draw closer. You want to be able to draw nigh unto the Lord. Because they found the book of the law of Moses, which was, which the Lord commanded to Israel. So some people may be off a little bit, or they, you know, you find the book of the law. It reminded them of their, how holy their God was. And a lot of them had a uh, righteous indignation when they found the law of the Lord. Because they, they realized a lot of the Hebrew Israelites wasn't keeping the law. That the Most High was a holy God purified. Purified. Now let's go to Galatians chapter 2 verse 16. And we're going to go back to Romans chapter 2. And then we're going to go one more time to Romans 7. And then the broadcast will end. So uh, Galatians chapter 2. I don't know if we read this scripture or not. But I wrote it here. I don't think we did. Because we're talking about the keeping of the law. It's inside of our hearts. We don't make void the law just because the law couldn't make anything perfect. But the law is perfect. Because the law comes with consequences. You keep the law on your own without Christ, the law comes with consequences. And those consequences for sin uh, can bring destruction. So Galatians here. We want to thank the Most High for giving us Another day to be on the broadcast. Galatians chapter 2. And let's look at verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, 
but by faith in Jesus Christ, Yahweh is his real name. So did you get that? Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, Yahweh Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by faith, by the faith of Christ. See, this is justification. So the Most High is saying, look, I done made a way for you. Stop trying to keep the law in your own flesh yourself, because if you do, that's what I'm going to judge you by. So you're trying to keep the, the laws in your own effort. You might as well go out there and slay an animal and pull the blood on yourself. Because now it's by faith, justification by faith in Christ, Yahweh Shai. It's justification by faith. And the laws, they're in our hearts now. So he says that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. So that's another thing. The works of the law. And this is where it gets off in Christianity where people want to work for their salvation. Um, now, there's a difference in working, you know, show me your, 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 your faith. I'll show you my works as, you know, in the book of James talks about that. That's a, a, a work while it's day working for the most high, doing what he tells us to do to bring edification and uplifting one another. That's the works. What are you doing? What are you doing for the most high? That's that type of works. But we're not working to keep the law to feel like that's the way we're going to make it to heaven. Because it's already in our heart. Because the most high said again, he knows those that belong to him. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. That's a whole mouthful right there in the scripture. For by the Works of the law shall no flesh be justified because some people, some people want to keep the law to make themselves more holier than now. Some people want to keep the law to make them feel like they are more righteous. Oh, I kept all of the 16, 613 commandments. I did this today. I did that today. The most high don't want us to boast in the law the works of the law. That's 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 not what's gonna um, give us justification because he gave us Christ that we give honor and glory to Christ and know that it's only because of Yahweh that we're able even to uh, obey the law, statutes, and commandments in our heart to love Him. It's it's like um, it's like the scripture says, if you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. If we're willing and obedient, it's like making a conscious decision. It's like being intentional to want to obey the law, the law, statutes and commandments of the Lord, because we want the blessings. We want to be blessed. We want our lives to be blessed. We want to inherit goodness. We want the meat shall inherit the earth. We want that for our lives. So it's like being intentional. Not boasting that we can keep the law like the Pharisees and the Sadducees were doing. That's why they were rejected. Because they wanted to uphold the law. They wanted to be uh, pious men to feel like they weren't like this sinner. So Christ came to save the, the sinners that had gotten away from his law, statutes, and commandments. So he favored more of the people that were willing to accept that they are sinners and that they need his grace rather than people say, I keep the law. I keep the law. I'm a law keeper. I obey all 613 commandments. Oh yeah, she did that. He did that. That's why when they brought the woman that was in adultery, caught in adultery, and Yahweh got down to right on the ground and all the people was around and he said who he without sin cast the first stone they had to run he got up and said where are thy accusers they gone why because they want to live under the law they wanted to condemn her under the law they wanted her to be put to death for her adultery under the law but Yahweh told her he said are they still there to condemn you? Neither do I. But go and sin no more. That's that grace. 
That is the grace right there. That's the grace and the truth that Yahweh came to give us. Moses brought the law, but Yahweh came by grace and truth. What would we do without grace? That Yahweh loved us so much that he gave us this grace and didn't condemn us because we got our faith in him. We don't have our faith in the law to live under the law, to be condemned under the law, to be cut off by the law. Rather, we receive faith justification in Yahweh Christ that shows us how to keep the laws in our heart and love his law. Why would we want, you know, most high deal with people and they relate. Why would you want to do that now? Why, why you want to do that? However, the most high deal with a person. He walk you through. So you get here, it says here, but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. Yeah, just because the most high give us grace, he is not the minister of sin. For if I build again the things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. Let's go to the next verse. For though the law, excuse me, for through, for through the law, I am dead to the law. That I might live unto God, unto Yahweh. We dead to the law. Because the law shows us our sins. So we shouldn't want to live in the law that constantly have to show us our sins. We should love the Lord enough that we don't want to sin. Verse 20 says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ liveth in me and the life which now I live in the flesh. I live by faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. Key pivotal point, one of my favorite verses. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come, come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. What the scripture is saying is that we can frustrate the grace of God. Excuse me. You, frust you frustrate the grace of God by not receiving what he has given us to help us overcome sin and the devil sin in the flesh let's read it again just now tuning in Galatians chapter 2 now we're in verse 21 I do not frustrate the grace of God so that means don't make it hard don't make it hard to receive the grace that the most high has given you to be able to um uh live the righteous life to be able to obey and keep the laws of God in your heart as we read in Jeremiah chapter 44 where he have now written them in our hearts don't frustrate it let him help you the law demands you to, to keep the commandments but grace shows you how because it says for if righteousness come by the law see righteousness couldn't come by the law because righteousness was there to show us our sins. The law is perfect in righteousness, in righteous, but it couldn't help us continue to help Israel, the Israelites, because it was there to show them their sins, which they would be judged for under the law by God. The law brought death. The law brought condemnation then Christ is dead in vain. So if you're not going to receive the grace that the Most High has given you, then Christ died in vain. That's what it's basically rhetorically saying. And we know that's not true. So that's why, you know, you go ahead and read a little bit more in Galatians. Well, Paul is saying, who has bewitched you to believe a lie rather than the truth of what grace came to help you do in uh, giving you the strength through Christ to help us overcome and live by faith, justification in Christ. Romans chapter 2, let's go here and we're going to look at verse 12. For as many as have sinned without the law shall also perish without the law. So we're going to be betwixt right here in these scriptures. For as many as have sinned without the law 
also perish without the law. Just now tuning in, Romans chapter 2, verse 12. So what did this mean? As many have sinned without the law. Well, you're going to die, perish anyway, you don't have the law. Because, first of all, you're just doing anything you want and people are in sin. They don't have no understanding of it. So you're going to perish without the law. And it says, uh, for as many as have sinned without the law shall also perish without the law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Okay, so now you know you got the law. So now it's before you right there. It's the schoolmaster showing you your sins, your sins, your sins, your sins, your sins, right before your eyes. So you will perish with the law if you ignore the law. If we ignore the law, we're going to perish with the law. Because the law is still there. It's perfect to show us this is wrong. This is wrong. So that's what the Hawashah is using the law for. You're going to perish with or without it. So that's why we have to live in Christ, Yahweh, to want to obey him from the heart. Because we said it before. After a while, the scripture says, I wish I could go to it. There remains no more sacrifice. For those that keep sinning, this this just because at some point the most high his 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 word should be powerful in us. The laws in our heart where we want to be able to live the life that Yahweh came to give us through grace. So it says verse 13: For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be. Be justified. Now, this may look like it's some type of discrepancy. The doers of the law, the doers of the law that are justified by faith in Christ because we obey him from the heart. Okay, so we want to stop right there. And uh, just a few more minutes here. I can look at a couple of verses that I wanted to touch on really fast here. Now, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8, it says here, if you have your Bibles, you can go there. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8 says, but we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient. Pretty much that sums it up because it's showing us our wrong for the ungodly is for the ungodly and for sinners for unholy and profane for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers for manslayers for homeowners for them that defile themselves with mankind for men stealers for liars for perjurers persons and if there be any other thing that is contrary contrary to sound doctrine that is what the law was intended for and who is intended for why does the most high have to keep showing us and putting the law in our faces to bring fear see the law brings fear to you that's why we Hebrew Israelite the most high's chosen people saw his children as you call them the ones that disobedient they have a, a healthy fear of the Lord you feel something, you know, that's because you're being judged. They're being judged by the law. Yes, they're being judged by the law. Now, let's look at another scripture here. And we read Romans chapter 7, verse 7. Now, 1 John 3 and 4, I think this is what I was trying to get to. Whosoever committed sin transgress also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So you get the most high is on his throne in heaven and you see all kind of stuff going on in the earth. Well, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked and you wonder why they get away with so much. Well, they were put here for that. They're not going to obey the laws. Heathen nations and what they're doing to our nation and gunning us down, they don't have the law. That could let you know right there, these heathen nations was not given the law. If they did, they would be somewhere studying or tuning in to a, this broadcast or another broadcast that's teaching and trying to understand so we can live right, obey God, and live how the Most High want us to live. Heathen nations are not going to do that. That's why they give authorization 
uh, in these high places for all these people to gun down our nation and no one is stepping up to implement change. So you want to understand why the heathen nation can do what they're doing. Because they have not been given the law. So people have their little Christian little ceremony, their little Roman Catholicism, little worship. They go to church. That means nothing to the Lord for these heathen nations. Because they don't have the law of the Lord in their hearts for right to do righteous. The laws is not righteous in these heathen nation hearts. Why are you so easily be tricked to be in a multicultural congregation? And they're not teaching you anything about fearing and obeying the laws of the Lord in your heart and loving the Lord enough not to sin against God. Why are these police on these police force say they're Christians? But they can gun down people in the street and do other evil things. Manslayer, we just seen that. So they'll get their judgment in the end. Because first of all, the laws was only given to the children of Israel. So the, the other nations and even the Antichrist, they are lawless, the lawless one. See, they lawless. They have no law because it wasn't given to them. So watch yourself. Because you're around heathen nations, they don't have a buffer. Watch your neighbors, watch people around you, where you go, on your job. Because you could be dealing with a lawless person. So you get a person that don't have no law inside of them. They come up with every inimaginable thing you, you ever can, you know, think of. That's why the news is full of it every day. So Isaiah chapter 33 verse 22 says, For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. He will say he's the lawgiver to Israel. So I think I want to go to uh, just a few more scriptures and I'm done here. Acts 13, 39. Through him, everyone who believes is justified from everything. Let's, let's just go there. Let's go there. Acts 13. I don't want to like to read it like that. Acts chapter 13. Thank you for tuning in. We, we're talking about the keeping of the law. Acts chapter 13, verse 39. And it says here. Let's go to thir verse 38. Be it known. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. So why are some of the Hebrew Israelites not wanting to put their faith in Yahweh? It's a lot of false doctrine out here. And we don't judge anybody because it takes time, some people time for the Most High to bring him to knowledge and truth and understanding just like he did myself after 30 years. And there's more things that we learn and grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. So we don't want to condemn our brothers and sisters, but we really want them to get an understanding that the, the old covenant alone doesn't forgive your sins. Now the Most High have mercy on us as human beings. He reigned on the just as well as the unjust. Look at all the heathens that's still living. So he's still a God of mercy. But we just read right here in Acts chapter 13, 39. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. So that means that we need Yahweh to forgive us of our sins. He is the uh, perfect atonement for us. Now, that's why it was important. You know, when you look and read the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews is telling the Hebrew Israelites it was a struggle for them to put their faith in Christ. If you, you, you know, they were just the original, like just pure 
relationship with God one on one. So when Yahawashah came, they were so used to keeping the um, the ordinances of the ceremonial laws, you know, things like that. They didn't they didn't know how to transition their faith in Yahawashah. That's why a lot of the Hebrew Israelites think Yahawashah is, you know, not of the new te of the New Testament. They don't want to believe nothing of the New Testament, but you have to, because this is what Paul and all of the apostles were written writing to tell them that Christ has came. Now he's the fulfillment. He was the as you know, systematic theology love to use the term type and shadow of the Old Testament of things that was to come to fulfill the laws for them now to be able to obey Christ but it was hard for them to understand it because because a lot of people think they're serving another God when you put your faith in Christ it's, it's what the most high ordained for Christ to come in the earth he needed blood to atone so you read the book of Hebrews you'll see read the book of Hebrews again you will see the battle that the author they're not sure who the author was of course theologians claim but they don't think it's Paul's writing, but it could be Paul's writing. But the author was trying to get them to understand the atonement. That's why he talked about Melchizedek, the high priest. He was trying to get them to understand the order now of the atonement of the Old Testament and how it comes together and binds together in faith in Yahweh Christ. That was the whole purpose of the, the book of in, in Hebrews. In, in the New Testament, because they had a hard time placing their faith and understanding because they were so used to living under the Old Testament and being judged by the Old Testament. Now, I will go to Romans for about five minutes here and uh, just go through a little bit what Paul was trying to explain in understanding the battle between the flesh and the spirit. And understanding what the law does for us and to us in these matters. Uh, the struggle against sin. That's what it's, you know, basically is in Romans chapter 7. As someone says, his favorite scripture. Because, yeah, because once you understand Romans chapter 7, you will know how to balance your spirit on the inside. When it comes to having whatever struggle you have on the inside. Because you understand now the, the purpose of the law. And the purpose of Christ. You will see the difference. So we can start here as, uh, as we kind of left off here. Verse 12. Romans chapter 7 verse 12. It says, Wherefore the law is holy and the commandments holy and just and good. Was then that was good made death unto me. God forbid, but sin, that it might appear sin, because mm -hmm, that's what the law does, show you sin, working death in me by that which is good. The law is good and holy, but it worked its sin in him because now it's showing him, the law is showing you your sins. That sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. Okay, now that I know I'm a sinner, oh, everything now the devil want to tempt me with. This is basically what Paul's saying, that it might become exceedingly sinful sinful for we know that the law is spiritual but i am carnal soul under sin for that which i do i allow not okay the good that i want to do i don't allow that for what i would that i do not the things that should do in you know abasing his flesh he find it hard that he do not but what i hate that i do so the things that he really hate, Paul is saying, I keep doing the things that I hate in the flesh. Whatever sin it is. If then I do that which I would not, if I do that which I don't want to do, I consent unto the law that it is good. So he going to make a dis understanding and distinguish distinguishing here, distinguishing that even though the law is placing it before him, and the law is good. Let's go a little further. Now then, it is no more than I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Yeah, you can't blame it on the law. Because the law is holy. 
spiritual, right, and good, and perfect. Can't blame it on the law. The law clean. The law is good. Can't blame it on the law. So he's making a distinction that it's me. It's in me. It's in this flesh. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Ain't nothing good in our flesh. Nothing. No matter how cute we want to be, how we got it going on, there's nothing good in this in this flesh. Everything good in me is God of the Lord. It said, therefore dwelleth no good thing. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Just now tuning in, I like to keep up with the scriptures. Romans chapter 7, now verse 18. It says, for to will is present with me. Okay, the will of the Lord to do right, to, to live right, is present. I have a problem with that. But how to perform that which is good, Paul say, I find not. I don't know how to do it. So that's the purpose of grace. Because grace is there to help us and show us. But he's saying here, he's not talking about grace right here, right now. But he's saying, I don't, he said, I find not, I don't know how to perform that which is good. I find not. Verse 19, for the good I would, I do not. The thing that I know I should do, I don't do it. There's a struggle. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Why you keep doing the same thing over and over that you know is evil? Why you keep doing it? So he's, he's talking to himself here. Now, if I do that, what I would not, if I do that, I would not. I'm talking to King James Version here now. He bonnets a little bit, so we're going to get it together. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more that I that do it. The things that he don't want to do, he said, it, it is no more that I that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So now he blaming all on the sin. That's inside of him. All of the flesh. That's why the Bible say uh, the heart is the deceit, deceitful, desperately wicked. Above all things. You can't trust your heart. That's why we need the Holy Spirit power in our lives every single day. No matter how long a person have lived holy, you can live a, a, a contrite, broken, good, purif purified life for 30, 40, 50 years. But if you get caught slipping out of the will of the Lord and surround yourself or the enemy, you, you know, could life will try to overthrow you. And those are the vulnerable times in your life if you're going through. If you're going through something, don't make hasty decisions. Because the enemy want to throw your, your life off course by getting you to make a decision based on how you're feeling. So he said, I find then a law. What kind of law he found? That when I would do good, evil is present with me. Yeah, because we have an adversary. The Bible said we have an adversary and he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. We all have an adversary. He said, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. I want to do what's right, Paul is saying. I want to do what's right. I delight in the law of God after the inward man. He said, but I see another law. What's another law? The law in my members. What's that? The law of sin and death. The law of temptation. The law of a stronghold. The law of sin. Warring against the law of my mind. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin. Which is in my members. Wanting him to yield. Wanting him to yield his members to what's going on inside of him. So he said, oh, wretched man that I am. So Paul had to call himself wretched because he realized, just like the scripture says, no good thing that's in us. No good thing within us other than Christ. So he see the sin in himself, whatever come in your mind, your thought, whatever. The Bible said, all, you know, we all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So whatever that is in every individual, he called himself wretched. Because it's unholy, is this not right? He's so wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body, from this body, the body of death, of this death? Because that's what sin does. Sin worketh death in us. Verse 25, here's the victory right here. 
the spirit of life. Here's the victory, verse 25. You're just tuning in, Romans chapter 7, now verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ, Yahweh, our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, and with the flesh, the law of sin. So he said, you know what? I'm going to serve the law of God in my mind. Because the Bible says if you keep your mind on him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. So if you keep your mind on your howl, you keep your, he'll keep you in perfect peace. He said, so then with the mind, I serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So whatever that is, that's what the law of sin is in my flesh, but I'm going to battle with it with the law of God in my mind, in my mind. Like they say, mind over matter in my mind. That's why you keep your, your minds, he keep you in perfect peace. You keep your mind on him. So when you don't pick up the word, we don't get into the spirit. We don't worship. You don't, you know, uh, keep yourself busy with the holy feast days and all the things that the most high has given us and um, afflicting our souls unto him to get rid of sin. If we don't do that, then you're going to become prey and, and fall to sin. So he said, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So the sin going to be there. But we go to the book of James. The book of James says, shall we keep sinning? And those that love the Lord don't keep sinning. We don't keep sinning deliberately when we love the Lord. Now, you can't trust yourself. And if you fall short of the glory of God, because the Bible says it. You're going to fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fallen, fallen, have, but you love the Lord, you don't keep sinning. So the Most High put you in the bind. See how much you love Him. Because we read the other thing, uh, the other verse, when I first got on in Exodus 20, 20, to show, to show us, to test us, to prove us. Got to be proven with the Most High. So it's, he's not going to make the decision for us to obey his law. He's not going to make the decision for us. He will help us through grace, but he's not going to make that decision because he has to prove us. And um, you don't want to be overrated as well. Self-righteousness will get you to fall quickly in sin. Feeling like you are, uh, in the, you know, you're indestructible to sin. See, feeling like you are above or beyond sinning. If you feel like that, then you're the one that the Most High is going to allow, like the Pharisees, to come and overthrow you. To show you that it is be only because of His grace and mercy. Because if you look here in chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, Yahweh who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's the answer right there. We walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's what the Bible is telling us here. And again, Paul is warned against the flesh and the spirit. So you got to find your balance in the spirit and, and power your prayers up and power whatever up you can that keeps you steadfast, unmovable in the Lord, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, Yahweh Shah had made me free, free from the life of sin and death. Now let's read that again. Just not tuning in. Romans chapter 8 verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, Yahweh Shah's real name, have made me free from the law of sin and death. See the life in Christ is the Holy Spirit. We have to enjoy the Holy Spirit. We have to love on the Holy Spirit. We get down. You got to find ways in the word of the spirit, the spirit. Because you frustrate the grace, ignore the grace, the most high sin in you, you're going to fall. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. See, the law was weak through the flesh because it couldn't, it couldn't make us perfect. The only thing it did was condemn us. It put judgment on us. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Looking like us, Yahweh Shai, 
you know, blood running through his vein like us, in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. So, the Yahweh Shai condemn sin in the flesh by coming. He came to help us. We Hebrew Israelites, we would have made it in the Old Testament if Yahweh Shai wasn't on the scene. So we go a little further here. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. He put the righteousness of the law in us. The law is righteousness inside of us. We read it in Jeremiah, what, chapter 44 and chapter 31. See, the law is inside of us. Making us righteous and is always before us in the spirit. That's why we walk in the spirit. You go somewhere, something come up, scripture come in your mind. That's the spirit. The Bible say he bring all things back to our remembrance. So the scripture come in your mind. When you're being tempted or tested, you may be tempted to get in an argument, you know, you may be to have anger, you know, you could be angry, but sin not. But some people go overboard, you get in an argument, now you're fighting and stuff, and now you, you just, you sin. Whatever sin or temptation you're going through, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. So the righteousness of the law is fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. We have to be intentional to not want to walk in the flesh. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So we got to figure out which one we're going to give our attention to. Because Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. For to be carnal minded is death. That's what sin is. That's why we go back up here to verse 25 in Romans chapter 7, verse 25. He said, but with the flesh, the law of sin. He served with the flesh, the law of sin. Why? For to be carnal minded is death. So he got a battle against that. But to be spiritual minded is life and peace. And that's why we read the first scripture where he says, I love thy law. We read that scripture in Psalms. Great peace have they that love thy law. Psalms 119, 165. Because once you get it in your spirit, you don't have any other life that you want to intentionally, or like David said, keep back thy servant from presumptuous sin. You don't have any sins that you want to presumptuously get into because you love the Lord's law. Again, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That's just the bottom line. You want to have peace, then you have to, we have to come out of sin, stay out of sin, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. So the sinful things that's in my in the in the minds is 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 enmity, is hatred against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. Because the sinful man want to do everything. The sinful man want to ignore all of the laws and the righteousness of the Lord. It can't be spiritual. It's not subject to the laws. The carnal man. That's why you can't trust your carnal man. Your carnal man don't want to do nothing right. Your carnal man don't want to love your neighbor. In our you know, brothers and sisters in Hebrew nation. Your carnal man don't want to do right. It's not subject. So we have to obey Love the Lord enough to say, I love you, Lord. I'm going to obey you. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So how are you going to get your blessing? Are you just going to keep going through stumbling blocks and can't get your blessing? Because the Bible says here, so they that are in the flesh, you can't please the Lord. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. It's so be that the spirit of God dwell in you, if he dwell in you. That's what it's just saying, period. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of God, he is none of his. Because you're not subject to the laws of God. That's why we talk about the heathen nation. They're not subject to the laws of God in their heart to obey the laws of God or to give any attention to the laws of God. That's why they can condemn you when you're walking in the spirit and you fall short of the glory of God. They can condemn you because they're not subject to the laws of God to know that, like Paul said, that in his mind, he's serving the Lord. He's working it out in his mind with the Lord. 
And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. So Christ in us, we shouldn't keep on sinning. All a bunch of scriptures that let us know and help us through grace. We can just go through a thousand scriptures that help us to understand through grace how the Most High is there. But he's, this is what he wants us to focus on. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So righteousness brings that life in us through the law working in our hearts. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahawashai, Jesus from the dead, real name Yahawashai, dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So the Most High give you strength. He's going to quicken you by the Spirit. Especially if you belong to Him. He chastised those He loved. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Meaning, put the flesh, put to death the flesh and all of its inordinate affections. Like the Most High doesn't want us to live constantly trying to fulfill the lust of the flesh in the world, particularly sexual sins. And nobody don't get up, jump off the broadcast. It's just you have to just put that out there because that is a that that sin. Even though the Most High, yeah, He helped you, He helped you, but it, it out of the covenant of marriage, of course, it can it can become such an um uh. I don't know the right word I want to use, but it's it's a it becomes abominable, abominable, because when you have sexual sins, you're sinning against your own flesh. That's the only flesh you you don't sin outside your body. You're sinning against your own self when you're committing sexual sins. It's against your own body, and your body is the temple of the Lord. So it, it comes with a little bit more severity with the Most High. When sexual sins are involved and people have to work that out with the most high. It's nothing to condemn anybody because the most high is um, a deliverer and he forgives sins and he is long suffering and patient. So we want to be able to um, not connect that type of sin in our lives that can destroy our bodies for as many are as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God because the Holy Spirit is leading us. So, for you have not received the spirit of bondage to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, for help. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, Yahweh. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, it so be that we suffer with him that we may also, um, we may be also glorified with him. So I think that's as far as I want to go as talking about, is touching on the law. The law is flawless. And the law, the law is inside of our hearts. And we keep the law through Christ. And uh, don't frustrate the grace of God that he has given us to be able to obey the law, statutes, and commandments. Yes. So, yeah, you like I said, thank you, brother, for trying to help get someone straight here. You know, a lot of people come on the heathens. And we just give attention to the word, you know, because they don't understand. They don't have the spirit of the Most High. So there's nothing we can do. I, you know, again, someone's supposed to be producing the app for the Hebrew Israelites to be on to come together and edify one another. Other than that, I have to leave it open for all to see because that's how we gather our nation. The Most High is about gathering our nation from the four corners of the earth and knowledge will increase in the last days. So we have this overflowing internet platform where people can just jump on. Yes, all praises to the Most High. All praises to the Most High. And uh, Sabbat Shalom to everyone again. I think I'm going to end the broadcast right there. And I'm going to put it on TikTok and some other social media platforms. So if you miss anything, you'll be able to catch it on um, the platforms that I'm getting ready to um, edit it and put it up there. 
So Shalom, my Hebrew brothers and sisters. Have a blessed day.